Hello and welcome to today's YouTube video. Today we are going over the second game from my tournament that I played on Monday, two days ago. And guess what? We're against Perry, a regular on this series of recaps. Um, and yeah, I have black again against Perry, which is insane. I get black against him literally every time. I've never had white against him on any of my recaps. And I've, I've been doing recaps for like seven weeks now. So it's quite insane. It, I don't know how this happens. I get black against him every single time. And this time I actually had a little something prepared and uh, let, let's see if you catch on because it's not exactly theory preparation. It's a different kind. D4, D5, Knight F3, Knight 2 F6, E3, E6. You see what I'm doing here? Now after Bishop D3, can you guess my next move? Bishop D6. Now after B3, can you guess my move? B6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, I actually did analyze this with the computer. I basically analyzed how long I can just copycat for and be completely fine. Because this guy, he plays his opening fast, but it's the Kali system. I don't know what to, the Kali system is so annoying to play against. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just going to copycat it. Maybe eventually I'll find a tactical uh, kind of system against the Kali because Perry is uh, quite lacking in his tactics, in my opinion. Um, and you'll see that at the end of the game when uh, I can start making tactics come alive. So yeah, bishop 2 at b2. And here's where I deviate with c5. Um, I analyzed this computer and this was like top move almost every time. Uh, similar to this position, so that's what I played. Um, B3 or uh, B B6 support C5, so I thought it was a good idea just to do it. Um, so yeah, now now I find Keto, castles, castles, and my opponent plays Knight to E5. I play Knight D7. My opponent plays F4, and I I knew he would do this. He kind of likes to play this Stonewall-ish structure, although this bishop and like. The setup on the queen side doesn't really make any sense um yeah i put my knight on e4 and my opponent plays c4 now here i chuckled to myself because if you notice everything else in our position let me let me just turn off feedback everything else in our position is completely symmetrical except for one thing one thing and you know what that one thing is f5 <laughs> so if you take a close look at this position everything that white has i also have which is kind of funny that's why i chuckled myself um yeah he took on d5 and i took back with the e pawn and he played at knight d f3 supporting his knight on e5 and guess what i did I did knight d f6. So, again, I have everything that he has, and now I think my position is actually better since he has a weakness on e3, and I don't. But I, I still have everything supporting my knight. I don't have a weakness on e6. It's great. I, I think my position's better. So, yeah, opponent plays rook c1. I play rook c8, and my, my opponent plays rook. Uh, Queen e2, and here I saw the idea that he wants to go uh, bishop to a6, and I don't have that idea since I haven't taken on d4. I think taking on d4 is not so great at the moment. So yeah, I play queen e7 anyways. Uh, again, keeping a little bit of symmetry. Opponent plays bishop to a6, and I play rook d8. I'm preparing for the opening of the d file maybe in the future. Uh, but yeah, my opponent takes on b7, and I simply take back the queen, and my opponent plays uh, rook c2. Now here, I the best move is actually just to keep symmetry, which is kind of funny to me. And yeah, here I take on d4, opening up the rook, 
Um, I'm kind of making him waste a tempo here because he takes on c8. So he literally just moved his rook. I took and then he moved it again where I could have just moved from c1. So I think I gained a tempo here. Anyways, rook takes c8 and uh, e takes d4. And here I'm just much better. Um, I have control of the c file. My bishop is going to be more active on b4 than this useless bishop on b2. Notice how my bishop got traded off. I, I don't have a dumb bishop like that. So yeah, my opponent plays a3 and I play a bishop to c3. My opponent plays rook c1 and I play uh, b5. Um, I can go b4, uh, but I was more looking at queen to b6, putting more pressure on the d4 pawn. So yeah, my opponent plays b4, uh, stopping me from playing b4 on my own. And I play queen to c7. And here I had a devious idea with uh, pawn or bishop takes d4. Um, it actually doesn't work because I didn't notice that the queen can go back to f1. Yeah, for example, if my opponent plays here, oh, it does work. Takes, knight takes, 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 queen f1, rook takes f1. Nice. The only reason that it works is because it's a pawn. Yeah, literally the only reason is because it's a pawn. Um, and essentially I just couldn't promote it, that's why. Uh, yeah. Anyways, queen's seven, he played knight to d3, cutting off the circulation of the queen from the b pawn, which was the best move, um, because my idea didn't work here, because the queen can always retreat to f f1, blocking the checkmating idea. Um, and the reason it checkmate idea is because the knight covers the f2 escape square for the king. Um, so yeah, here I play a5, supported by my queen, and my opponent plays g3. Don't worry about the misses, the misses are a bit cryptic, and I take on b4. Opponent takes back, and I play queen to c4. Now, this is just simply a blunder because he has bishop takes, knight takes, and simply can first of all just give queen e6 check but he can also just like play play knight here oh wait no he can't um he can like move his queen over but yeah queen e6 is just crushing um, he's just getting in he's winning all my pawns uh, not not very good so yeah after king ha for example now he can play this as well he is good though um yeah anyways it's a blunder, but it's not a blunder if they don't see it. So my opponent played king to f1. Um, I don't know what it does, to be honest. It does not seem like a good move, just looking at it, because it walks into some pins, and that kind of, kind of thing is not good. But I played queen b3 to get out of the pin myself, even though I'm actually still pinned to my rook. Yeah, my opponent takes, and I do rook takes, because, again, I don't want a piece to be pinned to my rook here. So how do, can I just get it out of that? Trade off the rook that, that things are being pinned to. So yeah, rook takes and queen takes. And here the game kind of just goes off the rails. We're both a little bit low on time, but I'm better in time scrambles than parry. Um, yeah, my opponent plays king to g2 to get out of any uh, check shenanigans, um, which makes sense. I mean, it's fine. But again, you could have played that from g1, you know, but you played king f1, king g2 instead of just king g2. You know, little things like that. Um, but yeah, I played a6, stopping any knight g5 shenanigans, and uh, my opponent like makes a huge mistake with uh, h4. And here, I I observed an idea that actually won me the game. If you notice, this square forks the king, the queen, and the knight. Now. You can't fork a knight and a king. It's just a rule. You, you can't fork a knight and a king with a knight. Unless, like, it's a promotion tactic. But in this situation, you, you just can't fork. But you'll see where that observation comes in handy a little bit later on. I play knight to h5. Now, it calls it inaccurate, but I'm still much better in this position. So, uh, Stockfish, you can be quiet. And uh, here... Essentially, you can't defend this pawn. You you can't. Um, you kind of just have to give it up. 
or you can blunder everything by trying to defend it with g4. Now, what am I saying? I, this fork isn't a fork. I, I just said it's not a fork because the knight is defending. That's the key. The knight is defending. So, what if I take the knight? Did you think about that one? Now, the reason that this is a brilliant move is because it simply wins a piece and a pawn and actually like everything. Like notice after queen takes d3, and it takes f4 check. Um, you actually like king f1, which is depressing in the first place. But uh, yeah, my opponent resigned here. Um, but yeah, for example, I continue king f1 takes. Guess what? I'm hitting two pawns. Like you're literally losing everything. You're completely lost here as white. Your knight isn't even attacking anything. It can't do anything. Essentially, it's actually quite useless right now, which is kind of funny. And if you take the pawn that I can take and then I can fork you or the other way around, for example, takes check. Um, King, King has to go to like G2 again, which is depressing. And then you go knight takes F5. You're literally herring every pawn on the board. I mean, you may be like losing a full piece, but oh man, that's not even the worst of it. You're losing all your pawns. Um, but yeah, that does it for that game. Accuracies, my opponent had an accuracy of 73.3, and I had an accuracy of 80.1. And estimated rating, my opponent had an estimated rating of 1600, and I had an estimated rating of 1850. Now, I think these are a little bit low because it's giving um, a relative rating based on the ratings that I put in myself. Um, so the rating system is different for USCF and um, chess.com. But I didn't. I did a USCF rating estimator, like to see how much points I would gain, and it gave, gave me like an estimated rating of 1950 USCF. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, and as always, I will see you in tomorrow's video.